Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Mark Fixes Stuff. In a previous episode, this arrived in a carrier bag in pieces, covered in what looked like farmyard feces. The whole unit is very dirty and very tired looking. Inside, the CD shielding is covered with rust. It's obviously been wet at some point in its life, but we did manage to get the board working in the previous video. We're going to disassemble this again and see if we can get it looking at least partially acceptable. The main board shielding also has some evidence of rust but it's not as bad as the CD housing. Removing the console connector. Again this does have some evidence of rust but we can clean it up and we know it works. Remove the cable that we repaired in the last video. Removing the freshly recapped board again and the lower shielding isn't very rusty at all. The CD drive worked well when we tested it before. So we'll just take this out and put it safely to one side. The last electronics in the unit is the subboard. First we'll take this connection cable out and by rocking the board backwards we're able to lift it up and off of the post. Almost a bit afraid to remove this shielding. Okay, let's have a look underneath. And yes, we can see more evidence of rust. It actually looks like this machine has been full of water at some point. Disgusting. Looking at the locking tab on the left hand side of the machine, even that's covered with some kind of dirt. I wonder how the dirt got into this. Anyway, we'll never know. The front of the panel has got the snap part that we've all seen before. On the back there's some of the print missing. So, let's give this a wash. Bowl of hot soapy water. And we'll let the locking mechanism have a nice long soak while we scrub the rest of the unit. This rust won't come off with water, we'll try something else later. As if by magic, the unit's clean and now let's give it some bumper shine. I love this stuff, it really does add a nice little sheen. It can sometimes be enough just to give tired plastics a new lease of life. With some wet and dry we're going to sand the metal shielding down. The idea here is to remove the rust and take the metal down to a point where the rust is no longer a problem. Thanks to Brendan Alford for this awesome tip. It does require elbow grease however. As you can probably tell, these sequences are shortened. Mm, it's coming off quite well though. These little details can be tricky, ah, not too bad, and good enough for internal shielding. Autosol paste is great because it allows you to get a better finish on the metal whilst giving it a protective coating. Working the paste in circles brings out the best of the metal. We could have gone further with the sanding, but at the end of the day this is internal shielding and I don't need a mirror finish, just need the rust to be gone. Well, it's certainly a lot better than it was, and um, take note that those fingerprints are almost a part of the metal now. They've probably been there for a decade, and they're a true testament to the power of sweat. This sort of job can get really old really quickly, but if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. This base shielding is really rusty. Not looking too bad now. It's really amazing the difference that you can make with this polish. Almost makes it all worth it. Almost. Well I think that looks pretty good so it's a thumbs up from me and let's put this back together. 
As you can see, I've cleaned the whole case. So we'll just put the lower shielding in. That subboard that we recapped in the previous video. I bought some screws for the occasion. Very posh. Two of those. Thread this ribbon cable back through. Seat the CD drive. We're going to take this off because it's easier to put the front back onto a Mega CD with that detached. And pop the ribbon cable back into the sub-assembly board. I often forget to do this, to be honest. Replacing the lower shielding for the main board. And then the main board itself, which we recapped again in the previous video. It's important to put the top shielding on before you connect the ribbon cable from the sub-assembly board. Replacing the board connector, making sure it goes underneath the lower mainboard shielding. That's all the interesting parts covered, so I'm just going to speed up the rest of the putting together process. That way you don't have to sit through it and it makes the end video shorter. I'm quite pleased with how the shielding came out in the end. I do need to give the front of that CD driver wipe. I'll do that in a moment. Yeah, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that considering how it arrived. Let's see if we can tackle this broken front bezel. First a bit of window cleaner. I find that the best for dissolving grime. A quick wipe followed by a quick drying off and it's looking better already. Clipping the head off of this cotton bud, I'm going to use it as a spatula to mix up some two-part epoxy resin. I prefer this over super glue because it doesn't leave any crazing on plastics that the fumes come into contact with. I'm going to try to only get the adhesive on the back of the brake. That way when I put the bezel back together, it won't sandwich out and make a mess. It is easier said than done though. Here we go. And it's sandwiched out the front. That's okay, we'll wipe that off with the cloth. Using this permanent marker, I'm going to colour in the adhesive while it's still tacky. I'm also going to cover up this dent in the front. Not perfect, but better and give this another coat. Let's let that adhesive cure overnight because I'm tired. See you in the morning. Cockadoodle do, no rest for the wicked. We're back, this is dry, it's polished up nicely. I went ahead and cleaned the front of the CD drive and now we're going to clean the clip on that goes on the tray. Let's make sure it's nice and dry so then we can give it a good blast of silicon spray. This really brings the finish of the plastic back. There, not bad at all. I mean, you know it's old, but it looks better. Time to put the front bezel back into the machine where it belongs, removing the lid and lining up the bottom tabs of the bezel. Just need to lift up the light parts so they snap into the right place on the bezel and now time to put the top back on. This can be tricky because you have to align the right side and the left side locking mechanism switch at the same time. Once the case is on properly, there's two important screws to put in that brace the console connector. These two screws are the shortest of any of the screws in the machine, so it's important to use the correct ones or source ones that are the right length. Putting the screws back into the bottom and our machine will be ready to rock and roll. Oops, almost forgot something. Gotta put that front panel back onto the CD tray. Press reset, hey, at least it opens. And let's pop that on. And by pop, I mean struggle until it goes on. At last. And closing the tray, the machine is finally fully functioning and all put back together. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks a lot better than when it arrived. Let's plug it all in and fire it up. Well, after all that hard work, I think it's time that we enjoy our Mega CD. I've got 
three, oh no, four discs here. I've got Solfius, I think that's how you say it, which is some kind of shooter, um, with a suspicious X-Wing going on on the cover. I've got three burn CDs, which I'm not sure if this will play. However, let's turn it on. This is the board that we fixed in the previous video. And reset opens it. I think first things first, we'll try the burned disc. We're not going to try Cobra Command on the other side of the multi-pack because it's frankly boring. Disc's nice and clean. And start, isn't it? Yes. I think one of the things I'm going to do with this machine is put a region free BIOS in there. Do do. Good old Sonic. I always thought that they'd build the Sega into it. Okay, so Wolf Team. Wolf Team. Let's get this. I think I can. Oh, nice. I'm using the RGB cable from Retro Computer Shack here and it gives an excellent image on this LCD TV. I'm using a Samsung, so um, this one um, works better than the previous one that I had, which gave me all kinds of jumpy lines out of order. Anyway, let's skip on here. I hope you can see this as well as I can. Ooh. Game start. Let's just see what we got here. So yeah, it's been a long time coming, this uh, journey of fixing this machine. Wow, wait, it's pretty damn good. So what's your experiences of the Mega CD? Did you have one? Did your friends have one? Did you wish you had one? Um, or were you someone who waited for the PlayStation or something similar? I'm imagining that this is quite a common game because you see it everywhere. I don't actually like this joypad very much. I wasn't blaming the joypad then. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. Let's just hit reset on that. So let's go into Uncharted Territory YouTube. Let's try one of my burned discs. Now, usually I use Tyo Uden Media, but I'm having to use TDK here, which isn't the best media, believe it or not. Um, and this is recorded uh, 10 times. And the um, the speed is actually set by the burner and the media. The uh, speeds it can be burnt out are written into the lead-in. So whenever I see an old uh, CD burner going into the bin in a machine, I always rescue it because often the older ones are the ones that burn more slowly and a more slow burn or burnt more slowly discs, that doesn't make any sense either. Discs, what are burnt more slowly, era, um, work better. Well, that's booting, so. I'll just point out, I've tested these discs in a, another Mega CD that's friendly to sort of thing. All right, yeah, well, that looks pretty good. Question is, will the intro play? That's often the bit that uh, fails here. Metro City, Pretty good. Crime capital, has been That's streaming audio. Death for many years. Game start. So what's your experience guys? Has anyone out there ever played Final Fight CD on the Mega CD? It's one that I understand that is rather expensive to get hold of on the interwebs. Yes. Don't dress like dancers. A 
chocolate. Oh, that was chocolate. I should have. Uh... This cable's quite nice because it doesn't give you the gel bars that you typically find. When I put this through my HDMI scaler, I, I get a little bit of a gel bar artifact, but not enough to put you off. Um, we could maybe do some streaming on this machine. I'm quite proud of the fact that this literally was a trash pick find. A real retro resurrection. Nice. Where's Axel? Whatever his name is. There we go. You could be dead. Okay, well, I don't want to bore you with that. Um, I'm going to save the gameplay, proper gameplay, for when we start doing the streaming. Because, well, you won't be able to see up here, but I've got a couple of HD uh, webcams which are ready to go, 1080p. And I've got a nice upscaler and HD resolution capture device which we're all going to run through OBS Studio and we'll be doing some regular game streaming from Mark Fix's Stuff Towers. I can't even remember what disc I've just put in to be honest. <laughs> Do. Oh, I do remember now. It's a bit of a weird one, actually. Uh, Kyo Flying Squadron. Uh, it's a Japanese game, but I patched the image to say it's European because this isn't uh, region free and neither is the uh, other Mega CD I've got. I have got the uh, uh, C27E problems to do so, but just haven't got around to it. But um, on the part that isn't the rendered kind of quick time video it's almost like the um, the audio runs completely out of sync this is a great shoot em up I think this is like a million pounds to buy on eBay but you know the Japanese and their cutesy shoot em ups so this is amazing and Sega um, we know it as a Japanese company but Sega was actually started by Americans um, two servicemen who after the second world war started putting um games into military bases so sega actually stands for service games don't think we need to watch the cartoon although it is awesome a little bit of gameplay and then we'll try the last disc Anyone out there played uh, Kyo Flying Squadron? Let me know in the comments below. If you have, what did you think of it? If you haven't, what do you think of this? And um, more importantly, if you own it, how much did you pay for it? I'm not sure why they're flinging pills at me. I think I've probably had enough pills as soon as I'm seeing dogs flying through the air. Oh, darn it. I'm not terribly good at shoot em ups. Not very good at shoot em ups and uh, speaking whilst playing games. Probably doesn't bode well for the streaming really. But I love this, it's really cutesy. Of course, the Mega CD boasting a 12 megahertz um, processor inside the machine, which basically takes over from the Mega Drive itself. So it is a, a faster machine. Great music. That 
that's close. I'll probably edit this down because it's probably not that fascinating. Right, and <coughs> one last game, I think. <coughs> a game that I wouldn't have been interested in when I would have had one of these back in the day, not that I did, which sort of leads into my fascination with having one now. I've got three at the moment. Um, Mickey Mouse, or the Timeless Adventures of, which was a SNES and a cartridge game as well. So, pretty sure I played it on the SNES, but it didn't hold my attention. But these days, I, I like gentler gaming, which doesn't challenge my old brain so much. So I think I'm a bit more appreciative these days. Of course, any game back then featured Mickey Mouse, apart from Castle of Illusion, obviously, would have been deemed as a children's game to me. Come on, Mickey. Where art thou? Nice bit of buzz. I get quite a lot of buzz through this Samsung TV when it's a bright picture. Developed by Traveller's Tales, who are no more. I guess I can cure that buzz a bit by putting the volume all the way up and turning the volume down on the set. So, so let's just press start and let's get to it. Of course, in the middle of a load now. Beautiful graphics. So if you don't know, I mean, the Tarnus Adventures of Mickey Mouse is uh, Mickey Mouse running through some of his animated adventures through some of his most famous, um, if I can load a game from before when we repaired this. Oh no, I didn't load it on this uh, machine because this is a CDR. Ah, Steamboat Willie. Wish I had a steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. Nineteen twenty-eight. My goodness. That's beautiful. You're a sneak. Oh. oh no, I've got a cork. Oh. oh yeah, the cat can't get you while you see Steamboat Willie. You're in here. I think you can fall in that pool. That's it. Pull inside, there's all sort of little Mickey star things you can run this way. Oh, I remember this from a long time ago. Anywho. Can't get out that way. Anyway, you probably don't want to watch me <laughs> play Mickey Mouse, but yes, here we go. The Mega CD, which was a retro resurrection. It was found and sent to me in a carrier bag in pieces um, and has been lovingly restored. And I quite enjoyed the process. So um, if you've enjoyed the process, then please hit the like button. If you like what I do, please share and tell others. If you don't like what I do, tell no one. But please, 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 please subscribe to get your fix. Bye. If you like this video, perhaps you'd like to watch some of the others. 
Here, I've put them on the screen for you. I really fluffed that line. <laughs>